This here is May. It's my little German shorthead pointer pup. She's a little bit shy. Say hello to everyone. No. Um, she's going to be a weapon on D when she grows up. So, let's talk about 7mm cartridges for shooting Samba. So the last time I did a ballistics video for Samba, I talked about 30 caliber cartridges. Now there were a couple in there that weren't exactly 30 caliber being like 303. Um, people were like, ah, oh, that's actually 0.312, it's not 0.308, but they never mentioned that the Russian cartridges were in there, which are also not 0.308. But anyway, um, so today we're gonna to talk about the seven mil cartridges. Now, when I did the calculations of the previous video, I sort of picked the most appropriate bullet for each cartridge, which sort of threw the numbers out a bit. For this one, because they are all exactly the same um, caliber, I picked the same bullet. Every single calculation on here is done with 162 grain ELDX from Hornady. I've used the Hornady load manual to get all of the data. I went to absolute max charge, max bickies, max chickens, to get the most out of each cartridge as according to that manual. Now, there is obviously other data out there, but I didn't want to go too far down the rabbit hole of checking every single load manual there is in existence to get an average of these speeds. So bear that in mind when I'm talking about how fast these are getting pushed. It's all in accordance with the Hornady load manual, except for one cartridge, which we will talk about when we get to it. A few of these cartridges sit in the same velocity bracket as their little uh, buddies. So I've bracketed those ones together. So some will be sitting singly and some will be sitting grouped as we go through this. We have brackets of speed from 2,500 feet per second all the way up to our high, fastest one, which is 3,300 feet per second. We have two measurements that we're gauging these cartridges by. One is the kinetic energy of the round. You've probably heard me if you've watched a few of my other videos talking about kinetic energy. The second um, way we are grading these cartridges is off the velocity band. Um, so going off the particular bullet, so the ELDX, this 162 grain ELDX, has a maximum speed of 3,100 feet per second. They reckon that above that, it won't function correctly of how it's designed to function. And Hornady say that anything below 1,600 feet per second is too slow for that bullet to function. So that's our bracketed window. Now, this isn't the best metric to use because you're gonna see as we go through these cartridges, pretty much all of them fall within that bracket. So that's why I do like to have the kinetic energy as my main source of information when I grade a cartridge. So the way we grade this with kinetic energy, for a samba sized target, uh, anything above 1500 joules is the correct amount of energy for a clean ethical kill. Anything below 1500 joules is deemed as being not an ethical kill. Yes, you can kill something if the joules is way less than 1500. However, uh, rule of thumb, 1500 clean kill. All right, got that in, let's go. So with all that information now in your little noggins, let's jump into the ballistic data. We'll put the strips down at the bottom while I talk and let's crack straight into them. So, all right, so the first one I'm gonna talk about is the 7x57 Mauser. As we can see here, it's going 2,500 feet per second, which puts us with this particular bullet out to 500 meters effectiveness on target. So we can pretty much stop the video there because every other cartridge is better than that and we can ethically kill a uh, Samba out to 500 meters. So it's been very nice having you here and I'll see you next video, hooroo. That was obviously a joke. After 500 meters, you can see it dips down. Uh, we got 1390, 1207, yada, 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 all the way down to 1000 meters. For that particular bullet, the velocity, we're still good out to 700 meters. So whether you go by bullet functionality or jewels on target, 500 meters to 700 meters for the seven by 57 Mauser. Now a lot of people pay that round off because they go, oh, it's small. So therefore it must be shit. Seven by 57 Mauser has been known to take uh, a lot of elephants back in the day. So it's not actually a very bad cartridge. Um, so yeah, be that as it may, seven by 57 Mauser. All right, the next three cartridges we have coming in at 2,700 feet per second. We have the 7mm 08. We have the 7x64 Brennecker. Now, a lot of people pronounce that Brennecke. Uh, my German friends say it's Brennecker. I'm going to say the Germans are 
bit more correct, and I'm probably not ex exactly pronouncing it correctly, but Brennica is a lot more correct than Brennerkey. So there you go. Um, and 284 Winchester. So as you can see on the joules of energy side of things, we have the correct amount of joules down to 600 meters. I dare say that most of you, unless you're a dedicated long range hunter, are not gonna be shooting a deer past 600 meters. And if you're not a proficient hunter and you are, maybe you shouldn't be. On the velocity band of things for this ELDX, we can get that out to 800 meters before it falls below the 1600 feet per second mark. Stepping up once again to 2800 feet per second, we have the 280 Remington. Stepping up 100 meters again, so you can see that pretty much every 100, every 100 feet per second, we're getting another 100 meters on top. As we get up to the ultra fast cartridge, you're going to see a little bit of diminishing return where that's going to plateau out and you're not going to get that much more gain for the amount of speed you're pushing them. However, 2800 feet per second, it's 100 feet per second faster than the last cartridge as we talked about and you're getting an extra 100 meters, which means that also on the velocity band of things, you're getting another 100 meters. So at 2,900 feet per second, stepping up once again, we have the 280 AI, which is the same thing as the 280 Remington, just that they've changed the angle on the shoulder of the round, you can probably see by the picture here, to fit slightly more powder in it, which gives you slightly more velocity. And that sits in there with the 7 SOM, which is the Short Action Ultra Magnum, also known as the R SOM or Remington Short Action Ultra Magnum. Now this is where it gets interesting, this is where it's starting to plateau. If you go from 2,800 feet per second, which was the 280 Remington, that got us out to 700 meters. If you then go that extra 100 feet per second, we're still at 700 meters because once we hit 800 meters, you'll see it's got a steep dive in its energy. Therefore, we have the same range for that. However, the velocity has now changed. So as you can see there in the velocity band for how that bullet functions, we can get all the way out to a thousand meters. And you're gonna see that for and you're gonna see that for all of the next cartridges as we go through. From now on in, they will all go over minimum. However, some of them are gonna go over the maximum at muzzle. So we'll talk about that when we get to them. Pushing up once again to three thousand feet per second. And this is where my favorite cartridge falls in. We have the seven Rem Mag, my favorite cartridge, is what I use for Samba. We have the 7 Wisdom or Winchester Short Magnum, and we have the 7 PRC. So the 7 PRC is new on the market. When you're looking this up, if you if you don't really know what you're looking for, don't be confused with the Wildcat. So before Hornady came out with the 7 PRC, the actual 7 PRC, people were wildcatting 300 PRC, necking it down to 7, um, and calling it the 7 PRC. Um, that's probably more akin to the 7 LRM, which we'll get into a little bit later but the actual new 7PRC is a whole different thing. So the, now the Wildcat is called the 7300 PRC. So don't get those two confused because old nomenclature for Wildcat is new official name as per Sammy Spec. So don't get, uh, don't get confused there. So as we can see, uh, 3000 feet per second, we're green across the velocity band from lowest to highest. However, at the 800 meter mark, we now drop off our energy. I am definitely not shooting a deer over 800 meters because of uh, my belief in my own accuracy. Um, I cap myself at about 500, unless it was like a once in a lifetime and I knew I could get the shot, I probably wouldn't take it over 500 meters unless I had done a shitload of practicing with that particular rifle and that particular ammunition, which with my rifle I haven't because it's new. So let's step that up once again. This is where the, all the next cartridges are like, you're, you're really, these are the really interesting ones and I wouldn't mind playing with a few of these next cartridges. So in the 3150 feet per second range, we have the 7mm STW. The 7mm STW looks almost identical to the 7 Rem Mag, except that the cartridge case is longer. So a 7 Rem Mag, a little bit of back history, originally is a, 375 H&H case, shortened neck down. The 7 STW is a full length 375 H&H case, neck down to seven millimeter. That's the difference there. So you get way more powder in an STW than you do in a REM mag, but everything else about it is exactly the same. Um, and we have the 7 LRM. Um, that's a Gunworks cartridge. So I believe from what I've read, the 7 LRM is pretty similar, if not the same. It is pretty close to being that 7300 PRC Wildcat that I talked about a little bit earlier. 
they're, they're, I think that well, they are they are slightly different, but I think in figures wise, I think they fall within the same realm. So as you can see here across the kinetic energy, we're good out to 900 meters. However, for velocity, this is where it gets interesting for all the next cartridges. At the muzzle, we are over the specified speed to push that bullet. So does that mean you can't kill a, an animal with that bullet? No, it just means that bullet is not gonna hold together and it may fragment, which means you may lose more meat because you're gonna have little particles of lead and copper throughout more meat than you would if it functioned within its correct functioning range. That's all that really means. Yes, you can push it faster than its fastest thing, but when you get down to the other end for low, um, the slower it's now going, the less the bullet will open up, changing its functionality, and it may not give a clean kill, which is what Hornady says on their website about this bullet. Uh, but then our minimum goes way off further than a thousand meters. So there you go. All right, let's step that up 50 feet per second faster to 3200. And we have two cartridges that are fairly interesting. We have the seven Weatherby Magnum and we have the 28 nozzle. Now you can see I've put an extra line in here for 28 nozzle and the reason being is I pulled the data from this from the nozzle reloading manual uh, and I used 160 grain AccuBond as opposed to 162 grain ELDX. And the reason I did this, I could have just done the numbers off a normal ELDX, but I did this purely to show you that the change in weight of your bullet does change your energy. So have a look at this. So the seven Weatherby Magnum, pushing 162 grain bullet at 3,200 feet per second. If you have a look at our energy, tops out at 900 meters at 1661. The 160 grain Acubon being pushed by the Nosler at 50 feet per second faster at 3,250, even though it's going faster, it's a lighter bullet by two grains, which is not a great deal. You can see that that tops out at 800 meters. Once it hits 900 meters in line, you can see there that it's 1661 versus 1348. So that's a great drop in kinetic energy. So that is one, because it is lighter, and two, because the BC is lower. So it can't carry that energy as far. So bear that in mind when you're thinking about what bullet you want to load in your, in your cartridge, or which packet of ammunition you want to buy from the shop, keep that in mind. Heavier generally is better, although it may be going slower from what you look at at the boxed velocity. As we can see here, they're both going too fast, too fast, for the first two bands, so at muzzle and 100 meters, and they're good all the way up to 1,000 meters. Now, the fastest on our list, the big boy, the Ultra Magnum, or 7 Remington Ultra Magnum, at 3,300 feet per second, which is 1,005 meters per second. Look at the green in that. So, muzzle energy. At the muzzle, we're getting 5,302 joules. Let's compare that really quickly to the first cartridge we talked about, the 7 by 57 Mauser. At the muzzle is 3,048. So, we have a gain there of... Two, nearly two and a half thousand joules at the muzzle, which is absolutely ridiculous. As you can see there, we still hold 1500 joules all the way out to a thousand meters and beyond. And then we obviously are pushing it too fast for that bullet at the front there, so it's not the best out to a hundred meters. However, it will definitely kill the deer. It just may, means you may lose a little bit more meat. So there's all the data on the seven mils. So which one should you pick? Now, a hard question to answer. You've got to really think about your style of hunting. Do you hunt in close terrain? Do you hunt long range? Do you want a short action rifle? Do you want a long action rifle? Some of these cartridges are short action. So Wisdom, Winchester Short Magnum, that's a, that's a uh, short action. Um, we have the Seven Psalm, that's a short action. And 7x57 Mauser, and 7mm08 are both short actions as well. All the rest are long actions until you get up to the Magnums and then they are Magnum actions. So everything from the 7STW all the way back down that list, those are Magnum length actions. 7 Rem Mag, although a Magnum is a long action length or standard action, and same with 7PRC. So I can't really answer that question for you. What 7mm should you use? Um, you need to look at it as what style of hunting am I doing? What's my range gonna look at? Look at some data, and then you can decide what you wanna use. If you want a nice light rifle, 
and you hunt in nice and close, you know, within, I would say, two to 300 meters, like a lot of the places around Victoria that are super, super thick, you might want to stick with like a 7mm 08. Or if you do a bit of both, like I do, you might want to go with a 7 rem mag because you can do close in stuff and further away stuff. Um, if you primarily hunt long range, like a mate of mine, you can use a 7 rum and absolutely punish the deer he's shooting at four, five, six, maybe 700 meters. So if you came to this video to look for seven PRC stuff, I apologize. I've pulled a Swifty one on you because I didn't really talk much about the seven PRC because we don't really know much about it because it's not really out yet. Um, I hope you got something out of that video. I hope you found it informative. If you did, hit the like and subscribe buttons. Hit the bell notification because I'm sick of getting people asking me like, well, you're not putting any videos up, but I am every week, every Sunday they go up. You just need to hit the bell icon because otherwise you won't get the notification and I won't show it to you until like a week later. If you want to support the channel, link to Patreon in the description below. Thank you for coming along for this wild ride of our 7mm cartridges. The next one I do is probably going to be 35 caliber cartridges because right now I'm in love with 35 caliber and I really want to share my love for that caliber with all of you. Hope you enjoy your week. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next video and hooroo.